Hello everyone, God bless you. My name is Pastor Robert Porter from New Life Christian Center Ministries, welcoming you here with me this Sunday. Let us pray and get right into our Father. We thank you for this word today. Father, as always, we just glorify you. We thank you for everything that you have done, everything that you're doing, everything that you're revealing to us in this time and in this hour. So Father, I also pray that this word will not rest on deaf ears, but only bring life and light to those who hear this word, Lord God. So Father, we thank you for it and we bless you for it. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Y'all may be seated. Now let me uh, start off by saying this uh, today. Last night, <clears throat> I really didn't know exactly how or what the Lord wanted to bring to us today. And when I stand up here before y'all, the goal is to allow the Spirit of God use me to deal with things that you know, you all need, you know, I, I, I'm i not here to just tickle your fancy or whatever you may be, whatever it may be. I'm here for a divine purpose, you know, that's to bring life and light and in, 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 in to break off uh, the work of darkness that's trying to, you know, come upon you, you see. Well, 3 a.m. in the morning, the Holy Ghost wants to wake me up. And tell me, okay, I, I got what y'all need. Uh, I got what you need in order to bring to the people today. 3 a.m. So I got up at 3 a.m. And, you know, I've been up for a while. and put it like this. Amen. So y'all just bear with me today. But that's okay. I'm in God's hands. You know. Um, so now, in saying that, Apostle said, he says, you know, things right now are really getting dark. This, this is what Apostle said. He says, we got to get out of the mindset of regular church. So anything can happen, you see, because what you have done when you come to church or you listen uh, to the recordings or whatever the case may be, what you're doing, you're entering into a supernatural atmosphere. I want y'all to listen closely. You're not entering into a regular atmosphere. You're entering into a supernatural atmosphere. So literally, you, the, the sphere of authority that I was talking about, you know, that God has given us, we taking it and we transcending it into a supernatural atmosphere, you know, which is governed and directed and led by the Holy Ghost. Okay? Let, let me just make sure we got that part straight. Because truthfully speaking, there is nothing that we can do on our own, hallelujah, that uh, can move us or put us into the supernatural. We're going to have to be led and guided into that space by the Holy Ghost. OK, so we ha we don't have to try to act like we all spiritual. We don't have to try to act like anything because that's a gift from God operating in the supernatural is a gift from God. So it is it's, it's more or less a thing of yielding and positioning yourself rather trying to get. OK, now see now. Since I said that. When Apostle said, he said that, you know, the, the church today, you know, um, we have certain teachers teaching certain things, you know, based on, uh, uh, how did he put it, glory, I'm talking about glory, you see, and, and leaving out the key element of glory is faith. See, leaving, leaving it out. So now we have in, we are creating a one-sided ministry, you know, church, you know, body. That's why I want to put body. You know, they, they thinking that they can do this and, and do that. And, but the bottom line is everything within the word of God is connected. 
and I need y'all to listen. It's connected. It's, it's something you just can't force. It's something you just can't say, this is what, what I'm going to do or whatever. I mean, whatever it may be, it can't, you can't buy it. You can't force it. It has to be given to you as a gift from the spirit. You, you see? So what I'm saying to you is that when you take the time and spend with God the way you should, then what's happening is the transformation of your heart and the transformation of your soul is at work. When you neglect that, it's still transforming, but not into God's glory or faith. It's transforming to the world and its system. And, and, and I, I need you to understand when you start uh, uh, thinking that your intellect and your wisdom and your degrees is going to get you places where it's unable to do. Are y'all are y'all hearing me? So now I'm not knocking degrees, I'm not knocking education and all that. Yeah, that's very important. You know, truthfully, it is. It's very important, but it's not the the key important thing because I have seen in time past you don't don't need a degree. To get in certain doors. If God opened the door for you, you can walk right in. You know? So you know how some of these jobs, oh, you need a certain degree to do this, whatever. People have gotten jobs. They, they're not even having a degree just to walk right in the door. Because God's glory and God's faith was working in their, in, in their behalf. See, that's something that you cannot just buy or think. It's a process of, of communicating with God, amen, on such a level that he is developing and strengthening your faith. Your faith go through uh, developing and strengthening, you see. So it, it grows just like a, a flower or a, or a plant or something. It, it continually grows, you see. So that's why he talked about having faith as a mustard seed because when, as a, when the mustard seed is fully grown, it, it's, a, it's, it's a big, big thing. But yet, it's a small little seed when it starts off. See, well, see, this, that is the scenario of your faith. The more you connect with the Holy Ghost, all right, y'all listening? The better positioning you are and the, the, the stronger your faith grow, I mean, the stronger your faith becomes and the more your faith grows, you see? So when the apostle was talking about that, it really had me, it really had me thinking, you see? I had to ask myself, well, all right, where am I? You know, where, 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 where am I? In, in the spirit, you see? I'm not talking about in the natural, I'm talking about in the spirit. Where am I in the spirit? Then it revealed to me the only person that can show me where I am is the Holy Ghost. But here it is. Are you willing to accept truth for where you are? Are you going to make excuses? Or are you willing to accept the truth of where you are? See, <clears throat> it's a statement that I, that me and Reverend would say that you only, that, that you only operate in the light that you know, you know. Only up. But see, a lot of people will look at that and take that as a cliche. No, it ain't a cliche. It's a divine statement. See, because of where you are is based on the light that was shined to you. Are, are you hearing me? Yeah. See, if there was a different light shine to you, you'd be in a different space. Right? I, 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 are, you, are you understanding that? Now, Oh, boy. Mm, let's get started. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians 2. Okay? <clears throat> now, we're going to start at chapter 5. I mean, I'm sorry, chapter 2, verse 5. I'm sorry. Chapter 2, verse 5. It says... That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. You see that? Yeah. 
Your faith should not stand in the wisdom of who? Men. But in the what? Power of God. Okay. Now, because, that, because we do not understand things of the spirit, our faith normally stands in the wisdom of man. We look towards man to get a job. We look towards man to take care of certain things. We look towards man to educate us. We look towards man and not the power of God to do what needs to be done. And these days that we're going into, that's going to have to flip. Your, your switch is going to have to flip. flip. Hallelujah. And then it says, six. How be it we speak wisdom amongst them that are what? Perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to what? Not. So God has told us right here, right? The wisdom of this world and the princes of this world ain't going to cut it, baby. That's what it's saying. You, 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 you are not going to get or not be, you will not be able to operate in the supernatural where signs and, and miracles and wonders operate along this. You, you see? See, when you're operating in the wisdom of men, that means you have taken on the identity of the world. Come on. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, didn't God say those that are friends with the world are enemy against him? Are enemy against him, you know? So, so now, here it is. You are a Christian, hallelujah. hallelujah, you are a Christian, that means your level of expectations isn't of this world, it's from God, you see? So that means that you live at a higher standard, not, listen, not thinking that you're better than anybody else, but how you carry, because you're carrying the spirit of God, you see? So when you're carrying that spirit of when you're carrying the, the, the spirit of God in you, the spirit of God is going to uh, uh, cause you to, to go in the area of the unknown. Good God, the unknown to you and the unknown to the world. Are you listening to me? Yes. See, when you are in that space of the unknown, you are experiencing God in a different way, yes. in a different way. That means that God is not just someone up here, but God is dwelling with you in here. So that means he is able, hallelujah, to release insight to you that has been binding you up. That means, that means things can be broken off of you. That means things can, uh, uh, could Lord have mercy. You, that means you have gone into a mighty transformation. And see, the thing is, people or the world don't understand this. Neither can they. We're going to get into this a little bit more. Seven. But it says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a what? Mystery, the unknown. See, so when things are coming on your back, you, you say, hey, with the world flipping and tripping, you saying there looking like, hey, what, what, you, what? hey, you know. Bring it on. I, I got something that's going to handle that. I'll give you an example of that. Remember Moses went and he took the rod and he threw it down? Yeah. Right? Now, see, that was a supernatural move, right? But see, the devil also operated in the supernatural too because he took two snakes and threw it down. I mean, he took two rods and they turned into snakes too, the, the magicians or whatever they call them, you know? But what happened? God override them two snakes, didn't he? He ate, took them, took them up, ate them up, right? So what is that showing you? That nothing can overtake God's power regardless of what it is. Yes. See, I, I just want to bring that little tidbit out. It says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, you see, even the hidden wisdom, good God Almighty, which God ordained before, before the world unto our what? Glory. You see that? Yeah. So God's wisdom is God's glory and favor that's resting on us. Good God resting on us. 
So that means all we have to do is basically tap into the things of God through the Holy Spirit and watch how things are revealed. So that means the hidden traps that the enemy has set before you will be revealed. So you'll know how to maneuver in times where times don't look like you can. Eight, which none of the princes of this world, what? Listen, look at this, knew. You see that? Which, which, which were none of the princes of this world knew, right? For had they knew it, they would not have what? Crucified the, what? the Lord of what? Glory. See, sometimes, sometimes you're going to have to crucify, be crucified to something. So God's glory can rise. We are too we, we are too caught up in situations. Oh, hallelujah. I'm just going to let the Holy Ghost have his way in here. Hallelujah. We're too caught up in, in, in situations, right, which, which is breaking us down to understand the movement in the inside of God. Because we're too, we're too structurally oriented and, and, and too stuck in, in our ways that we can maneuver. Why? Because we have, we have not taken the time to unlock our eyes so we can see and our ears so we can hear. Uh, nine, but it is what? Written. You see that? Eyes have what? Not seen, nor is heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. Listen, neither have entered into the heart of man. You see this? So the things of the supernatural can't enter into the heart of man regularly. It's nothing that you can do because you can't see and you can't hear. Go ahead and finish reading. The things which God had prepared for them that what? Love him. So sometimes we sitting in church like a bump on a log. Hallelujah. I'm not meaning that in any disrespectful way. Right? The man of God preaching the teaching to you, and you can't grasp it. You see? And the reason why you can't grasp it is because you haven't prepared yourself to grasp it. You want to come to church with all this stuff on your mind where you need to pray before you get to church so you can have some kind of understanding, hallelujah, beyond your own intellect, some understanding so the, the mystery of God can be revealed to you. Because once the mystery of God is revealed to you, then your situation and your circumstances is over. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you? Yes. It's no longer, you're no longer dealing with that issue. Yes. See, what's keeping you in that issue is your mind and your emotion that is attached to it. When God gets involved, he's going to break that, that, that barrier of emotion and, 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 and that, that, that thing that's keeping you locked down. Why? Why? Because he knows that, oh, he, uh, they, oh hallelujah, he knows that truth is getting ready to be revealed. See, could Lord have mercy. See, when, when you're operating in that sphere, in that supernatural atmosphere, right, Hallelujah. It's, it's pure truth. Right? It's pure truth. The, the Holy Ghost will always lead and guide you into all truth. Yes. Right? So, you being broke is a lie. You being sick yes. is a lie. Oh, you being oh, stuck is a lie. Yes. All of that is a lie. Oh, but the, b because we have not taken the time to connect or let me put it like this. We have not realized how important it is for our relationship with the Holy Ghost. We neglect our truth. So, 10. But God has revealed them unto us by his what? Spirit. By his what? Spirit. So, in, in other words... You can't get nothing unless it's through God's spirit. You won't understand anything concerning your life, not unless it's revealed through God's what? Spirit. 
Why are we so busy trying to get all this education and all this stuff and all we need to do is connect? I'm not, believe me, I'm not saying that it's not important. Education is very important. Very important, but it's not more important than your connection and your relationship with the Holy Ghost, you see. As Christians, our life is supposed to be supernatural, not natural. But we have parked in that natural space and we have forgotten, hallelujah, who we are. Because we are, because there's nothing constantly reminding us that we aren't what they say we are. But God has revealed unto them by his spirit. For the spirit searches what? All things of who? All things of who? Yea, all things, deep things of what? God. He ain't say anything about the world. But yet, here it is, we, 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 you know, we educating ourselves, trying to get more and more, trying to figure out how we're going to get this money, trying to figure out how we're going to do this. Then we listening to the doctors constantly lying to us, dressed as trying to practice on us on certain things that we ain't even supposed to be taking or doing. I mean, could God Almighty, really? So, so now, as apostle, as he was talking about this thing, you see, he laid this mandate on us to be teaching this. Then he says, all his churches, his LTMA churches, the congregation have to know how to live in the supernatural. Yeah. He said they got to know how to live because as time get darker, we are moving in a spot that our intellect ain't even going to be able to carry us through. Right. I don't care how smart you are. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I, boy, I got a lot to say about that one. 11, for what man knoweth the things of a man, saith the what, spirit of man which is in him. So, you know, even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of what? God. What it says? The, spirit of God. the things of God knoweth what? Know what? No so that means we clueless. We only operating off emotions and what we think they should be. You see? Boy, hallelujah. I should be in the front line on that one. Because I'm telling you, right? Literally, I have made plenty of mistakes operating under that wisdom. Oh, come on, holy church. Right, we we had we have made I have personally made a lot of mistakes. I have gotten things stolen from me. I have, I mean all sorts of things have happened because of this. Because I have put myself in a position where I have literally shut God out and I have turned towards man in order to get the very thing that God says I have for you through my promises. Now we receive not the spirit of the world. Listen, 12. We have not received, oh, I'm sorry, now we have received not the what? Spirit of the world. You, you see that? So you have not received that, so why are you trying to? Uh, we, we fighting to get, get ahead. What, why? Okay, for we have not received, not, I mean, now we have received not the spirit of the world, the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely, what? What's that word? Given. 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 What? To us of what? God. I got to stop right there. So, 13, which... Things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, you see, but which the Holy Ghost, what, teaches. What comparing spiritual things with what? Spiritual. So basically, the Holy Ghost is teaching the spiritual things, you see. See, that's a supernatural life that has resurrection power to it. 
That means anything that was dead can be arise right now or risen. That means it don't have to stay the same. It don't have to look the same. Everything that you're dealing with, people, you can change. It does not have to be in that position. Because you're operating on a different wisdom that comes with power. Good God have mercy. Are y'all still here? Yes. Mm -hmm. 14. But the natural man. You see that? The natural man. Say that with me. The natural man. The natural man. Receiveth what? Not things of the spirit. The spirit of God. The natural man. So you can come in with all these natural thoughts. You're thinking about, you know, okay, I'll be glad when church is over. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get, you know, find me something to eat at Kentucky Fried Chicken, whatever the case may be. Good God Almighty. You know, the, the natural man. So that means anything that God has for you to take you out or to move you ahead, you have stopped it or the natural man can't receive it. You see? Wow. But the natural man... Receiveth not in things of the Spirit of God, for they are what? Foolish unto him, neither can he know them, because they are what? Spiritually discerned. So God is ready to give us all things. Because we, we, we do not have the spiritual discernment that we need, we can't receive them. Because you will think it's foolish to you. You see? You will think it's foolish. Because you want to put your reasoning into this. And all you're doing is clink, clink. You just locked it up. And, and stop God from moving in the area he should. And it says, 15. But he that is super spiritual, I'm sorry, judge of all things, yet himself is judge of what? No man. You can't even be touched. Because of the protection of God that's resting upon you, you see? You can't, you can't even be touched. For whom have known the mind of the Lord, that he may what? Instruct him. But we have the mind of what? Christ. Now, I have read 1 Corinthians 2, starting at the fifth verse, you see? And we took it all the way down to the 16th verse. And this was done to show you that you've been a free agent too long. Hallelujah. You've been operating on things on your own and not taking time to allow God to assist you. Now, because of this, it's, it's the reason why we're going through things that we should, we, you know, we are fighting battles we shouldn't even be fighting. That's taking the energy and the strength from us to move forward in the direction God wants us to go. Yes. So our energy is being transferred in a different direction when God is saying, hey, hold up. Wait a minute. Yes. See, so when that happens, your faith dawns. Okay. Instead of it growing, it starts whimpering. Because you are looking for another source rather than God to supply what you need. 